Hello you guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Charlotte. Thank you so much for being here with me today. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I make a lot of videos on beauty and fragrance, fragrance mostly. Today I want to share with you the lineup I have of BDK samples and decants and tell you whether I think they are full body, <laughs> full body, full bottle worthy or not. Now, I went ahead and bought uh, five decants that I've been experimenting with over the past few months, and I also got four samples to also check out. I definitely have some preferences in here. All around, I found this was a great way to get to know the BDK DNA and vibe. All of the fragrances in the BDK line, from what I get, are very easy to wear, very well-blended fragrances. They are good quality and they're also very approachable niche fragrances. If you're coming from a designer background, you will find something. They're not gonna be too hard to figure out, I don't think. I think they are a great introductory niche brand if you're new to niche. And yeah, let's get into it. So let's start with my little sample of Bouquet de Hongrie. This is a floral fragrance that came out in 2016. The juice is literally pink, very feminine, definitely gives a feminine vibe and it is a feminine fragrance. Right away I get that musky rose and strawberry. This feels very feminine to me, very soft, feminine, very easy to wear, good for all ages. I could see a younger girl wearing this as well as an older woman wearing this. This to me is definitely a everyday sort of fragrance. It is not a sexy fragrance. This is not a going out sort of fragrance. This is an everyday casual fragrance that's probably really great, especially in the spring and summertime. This is the kind of fragrance that to me is full bottle worthy if I come across a good deal or a sale, but it's not necessarily unique enough to me or intoxicating enough to me to want to buy a full bottle. All of these fragrances are, you know, more expensive. They are in the niche category and they are not necessarily the most expensive niche fragrances. They're a bit middle of the road, but you still got to save up. For most people, you have to save up to buy one of these fragrances or reserve part of your budget, you know? Yeah, this is a very beautiful, fruity, fresh, sweet, musky, sort of slightly fresh fragrance. The rose in here is not overbearing to me or stale or old or it's very nice and fresh to me but it's definitely very present so if you're not a rose fan definitely sample this or maybe you won't like it at all even you know because the rose is very prominent but yeah the fruitiness in there I'm getting more of the pear now but I definitely got that strawberry right away as well. Strawberry rose musk. Very nice. Like I said, full bottle worthy. I would say if I could find a good deal or a sale, yes. Otherwise, it's not at the top of my list. Next, uh, this was one of my decant choices. This is a fragrance that, as you can tell, I did not get much wear out of. I wore this a couple times, but I found this to be very peppery, and the pepperiness was a little bit too off-putting to me. This has a lot of suede and pepper in the mid, and I find it a little bit overpowering in that aspect. There's also something very musky and powdery and comforting about the fragrance as well. Like right away, like there's a bunch of fruits in the top, but I don't get that much. I don't get them that much. I really get that suede from the get-go very strong. And I get a lot of those peppers in there. It has pink pepper and pepper. It definitely has a sandalwood. I get the sandalwood. I get the vanilla and the cashmere and a lot of the musk, but very leathery, very suede -y. It has that birch in the base, which is definitely amplifying the leather accord. So I have very mixed feelings about this. This is definitely not personally full bottle worthy for me, but that's not necessarily because it's a bad fragrance. I'm just, I'm not the biggest pepper and leather fan. That said, I think if you are a leather fan, I think this is a very beautiful, unique take on leather, maybe because it's more of that suede. And if you like a pepper kick, it will literally, like it will make my nose run. Like I get that pepper a lot in this fragrance. And to me, it doesn't really go away. It's, um, it kind of stays with you throughout the fragrance. So that part I find a little bit too overbearing, but the cashmere and the vanilla, the musk in here. I love those notes. And so I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with this fragrance. 
So that said, I also think this is a very unisex fragrance. I could see women wearing this. I could see men wearing this. It really doesn't lean feminine or masculine to me. So this is Crème de Cuir, and Crème de Cuir is a leather fragrance that came out in 2018. So yeah, I'm very on the fence for that one. But because of that, and because there are some that I absolutely do want full bottles of, I would say that this one is not full bottle worthy for me as of yet. Definitely not on the top of my list. Next we have Passessoir, and this was another one of the decants that I got. And as you can tell, probably from there, I have worn this quite a lot. I'm halfway through my decant, and this is a beautiful fragrance. This is definitely full bottle worthy to me. This is a floral fragrance that came out in 2016. This definitely has a lot of pepper in the opening, and like I said, the other one had too much pepper, but with this one, I don't mind it, and it does get toned down with time. But aside from that, it's a very, very intoxicatingly fruity, sweet, patchouli, cashmere, and woody scent. This is very feminine to me. This is sexy. This is absolutely a staple sort of scent to me very much a crowd pleaser i think this is a i think this is a safe blind buy if you like a fruity sweet um sexy feminine fragrance it does have that warm spiciness from the ginger and the mandarin orange it's not too gingery i get that quince in the mid which is that giving that very intoxicating mouth-watering fruitiness to the fragrance. It has some beautiful florals with the jasmine and the orange blossom. It does feel a little bit creamy. I don't know if it's from the jasmine or the cashmere but yeah, it definitely feels um, creamy to me. I definitely get the patchouli. It's beautiful though in here. This is a patchouli that I love. Very easy to wear. I would definitely bathe in this. I definitely think this is full bottle worthy and I definitely intend to get a full bottle of this eventually. Next, we have Tubereuse Imperiale. This is an amber fragrance that came out in 2016. I just have the little sample. This is absolutely beautiful, you guys. Wow. Now, I am a Tuberose lover. So, remember, a lot of people have love. A lot of people don't like Tuberose. If you don't like Tuberose, you're not gonna like this. This is a beautiful, fresh, but still creamy Tuberose in here. It has a lot of that fresh quality from Marfa without being green. It still feels creamy. This is a very easy to wear tuberose fragrance, everyday tuberose kind of fragrance for a tuberose lover. Yeah, this does remind me a little bit of Marfa, just a little less green. And this is absolutely full bottle worthy for me. The only caveat to that, however, is personally for me, it might be redundant in my collection because it does remind me a little bit of Marfa. But I'm not gonna lie, I would love, love to have a full bottle of Tuberose Imperiale. Absolutely beautiful fragrance. Next, we have Velvet Tonka. This is a fragrance that just came out last year in 2021. Ugh, you guys, I really, really love this fragrance. Uh, I have tried this on skin, I love it. The opening it has a very strong almond note in here with the Tonka but the almond in here smells a little bit, has a little bit of a cherry vibe to it, a little bit of a marzipan vibe for sure. The almond here does have a bit of a marzipan vibe to it, at least in the opening. Yeah, this really reminds me of marzipan. It has that booziness, that smokiness in the background from the tonka bean, but it's still very sweet and vanillic and gourmand. The tobacco in the mid, definitely I get it, but it's a sweet cherry sort of tobacco. This to me is definitely full bottle worthy, and even though I only have this little sample, so it, you know, I've said it before, but I find sometimes little samples you can, doesn't give you a good sense of the fragrance as a whole, even though I only have this little sample, yes. I think it's full bottle worthy, and I fully intend on eventually adding it to my collection. Next we have Oud Abrahamad, and this is an amber fragrance that came out in 2016. Oud, oud, yes. Ambery oud. Definitely getting a little bit of that skanky oud in there. A little bit of dirtiness in there. Quite full bodied though. Definitely smoky as well. Maybe it's that cumin that's smelling a little bit, you know, more dirty to me or something, or animalic. It also has castorium, it has labdanum. It's definitely more of an animalic, musky, 
oudy, woody, spicy sort of fragrance. Smoky as well. Definitely too heavy handed for me personally and too woody and oudy and dark for me. Um, definitely leans more masculine. It's definitely a masculine fragrance to me. I think if you love oud, then you might like this. You might also find it redundant if you already have a lot of oud fragrances or you already have your solid oud fragrances in your collection, but it is good. It smells good, but definitely not for me. I would not get a full bottle of this and I don't think, um, I don't think my partner would really be into this too. It smells very manly. It's very masculine, very woody, very smoky. That's Oud Abramade by BDK. Next we have Gris Charnel and this has gotten a lot of hype, of course, all over YouTube and Instagram and I was certain that I was gonna love this and I've had a journey with this fragrance. As you can tell, probably, I have worn quite a bit of this decant and I kept going back and forth on it. My initial impression was a little bit of a letdown. Uh, I had very high expectations for it. Um, I have since come around to really enjoying it. Actually, I realized how much I loved it once I sprayed it on someone else and was able to smell it on them and I got whiffs of them. I was like, wow, I really enjoy the sillage it gives and the scent bubble. This is a fig sandalwood. So this is a fig tea sandalwood fragrance. This is a very cozy, sensual, sort of rainy day fragrance to me. It does smell good. At first I thought it might be a little bit redundant. I have a lot of sandalwood fragrances in my collection. It's so well done though that it still feels full bottle worthy to me, especially as a sandalwood lover. It's not quite look tonic. It's the kind of sandalwood that's constantly kind of going back and forth between powdery and milky. Um, maybe it's that fig that's making it a little bit more milky as well, but very nice fragrance. There is a good dose of cardamom in here, but um, it's not too overbearing. It's not too pronounced. It's definitely nicely blended and toned down in this fragrance, which is my preference. I don't like when cardamom is too, um, too noticeable. I find that it can be too sharp in its spiciness sometimes, but this is beautifully blended out, blended in, and it doesn't take time for it to get blended in and toned down. It really is blended in from the get-go. Beautiful everyday sort of scent. This could definitely be a signature scent. Uh, I think it's full bottle worthy. I'm just not sure if it's the first full bottle I would get from BDK, but yes, I do think it's full bottle worthy, especially if you like that sandalwood tea fig combination. Very easy, safe, safe purchase if you are a lover of those notes. This is Gris Charnel by BDK. I also think the color of the juice is very representative of the fragrance. It's this very like cool, dark, gray blue sort of color. It really feels like a rainy day fragrance and I totally understand why people love this. Gris Charnel by BDK. And Gris Charnel is an amber spicy fragrance that came out in 2019. Next up we have Wood Jasmine. And this is a fragrance that I had, oof. This is a fragrance that I had a little bit of a journey with as well. I held off on trying this for the longest time because I didn't love the first impression I got from this. So Wood Jasmine or Wood Jasmine is an amber floral fragrance that came out in 2016. And this has a very boozy plum opening. Yeah, like very boozy, very boozy. It's not my favorite. I actually don't really like the opening at all. And that's what made me not reach for this decant and not want to wear it. But when it dries down, I do really like the dry down on this. It has a beautiful ambery, incense-y dry down to it. It's very balsamic, but like I said, I need to get over that initial opening. I really don't care for it much. I'm already not a, the biggest plum fan, but on top of that, it's a very strong boozy plum. I don't get much of the pear. The pear in here is more of that like dry tobacco-y smelling pear to me. Not a juicy fresh pear. It's funny because on my skin, I totally get the jasmine, but on this paper here, I'm not getting much of the jasmine, to tell you the truth. But the jasmine is never going to completely overtake the fragrance. It still feels very primarily woody and ambery. 
I think this is a beautiful fragrance for uh, both men and women. It's perfectly unisex. And this is a good um, example of a jasmine fragrance that is that leans a little bit more masculine to me. And yeah, like I said, I really much prefer the dry down. If it weren't for the opening, I think it would be full bottle worthy for me, but because I don't care for that boozy plum opening, I just, it, it can't be. It's not full bottle worthy for me. Like I said, I think this is a beautiful ambery balsamic fragrance though, if you like those kinds of fragrances. And if you like a plum fragrance, if you like a boozy plum fragrance, definitely check this out. Definitely balsamic, like I said. With that incense and vanilla, when those come out, I really enjoy it. This is one of the stronger fragrances in the BDK line as well. And then last, but certainly not least, I basically kept my favorite for last. This is Rouge Smoking. As you can see, I've basically almost finished. Well, no, I still have, I still have a few wears left, but I have gone through most of this decant. And this is one that I know I will finish, that I cannot wait to get a full bottle. I am currently on a no buy, so an unannounced no buy. I guess I'm announcing it now. So I don't intend or expect to get it anytime soon, but this is definitely solidly on the wish list and is probably the first next to Passessoir fragrance that I would want to get a full bottle of. Oh, I sprayed too many sprays there. This is a beautiful balanced sweet vanilla cherry fragrance. I say balanced because so many cherry fragrances come off as being too boozy, too cough syrupy in their cherryness, always kind of missing the mark on where I want the cherry to go. This one, however, is just perfect to me. Perfectly balanced between the cherry and the vanilla. This is not the loudest fragrance. This is like a everyday perfect cherry vanilla fragrance to me. It's gourmand. It's a little bit floral as well. It definitely has some muskiness. The tonka bean in here marries very well with the cherry and the vanilla. It adds a slight smoky edge to it without being outrightly smoky. Uh, I find this quite feminine. I definitely think it could be unisex. A man could wear it as well, but it does lean a little bit more feminine to my nose. And yeah, this is just one of my absolute favorites from the line. I absolutely think it's full bottle worthy. This is so easy to wear. One of those fragrances that I could bathe in. I just love it. Rouge Smoking is an amber vanilla. They came out in 2018. So there you have it. I would say that, what are my favorites? I would say Passessoir and I would say Passessoir and Rouge Smoking are definitely the first contenders on my list. After that, I would say Oof. Tubereuse, Imperial, Gris Charnel, and Bouquet de Hongrie. Those are basically the five that I definitely would like to have in my collection. But, you know, Tubereuse, Imperial, maybe, and Bouquet de Hongrie, maybe even Gris Charnel, less of a priority. I definitely feel like I need to eventually get Rouge Smoking and Bassessoir. Oh, and of course I forgot. Of course I forgot because of the sample. Velvet Tonka as well is absolutely full bottle worthy for me. That would be one of the uh, top three. Passessoir, Rouge Smoking, and Velvet Tonka. I think those are the top three that I would like to add to my collection because they are not redundant for me and they are my favorite. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that you guys. I hope it was useful to you. I hope it helped you out in uh, knowing what samples to pick out or if you want to blind buy, which one might be most appropriate for you. I would love to know what your preferences are. Please let me know down below what your favorite fragrance is from the line. If you've tried any of them out, BDK is still a relatively new niche brand. So I know a lot of us are still starting to get to know them. I would love to discuss down in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. And of course, as always, take care of yourself. I'll see you very soon. Bye.